Hello and welcome to this video on finding the least common denominator, or LCD, of two or more rational expressions. Uh, this is several examples of finding the least common denominator, which is also the least common multiple of the denominators of two or more fractions. Uh, a rational expression is just a, you know, a fraction where the numerator and denominator are both polynomials. Uh, so just you know, again, several examples of this. All right, so my first example is this one here. Uh, where I'm asked to find the least common denominator, or LCD for short, of the rational expressions. And I've got two here. Uh, 5 divided by 8x squared y and 1 divided by 12xy cubed. Now this is uh, an example here where all the polynomials in my numerators and denominators are a single term. Right? These are all monomials. Uh, but before I get to that, let me show you an example off to the side here of where I'm asked to fi find the LCD, right? find the least common denominator, or again, the least common multiple of the denominators uh, for a couple fractions with just numbers. So how about for, uh, say, 5 sixths? and another fraction, say, 11 45ths. All right, so I'm going to write the steps out here. What we're, and what, we're going to, what I'm going to do with these numbers is exactly the same thing we're going to do when, when the polynomials have variables in them. Uh, so the first step is we're going to factor each denominator completely. Okay, and again, we're only focused on the denominators of the fractions in this video, All right, finding the least common denominator. Um, so for this particular example, you know, I've got a denominator of 6, which when you factor that completely breaks down to 2 times 3. That's a product of primes, their prime factorization. And 45, the other denominator, uh, that's 5 times 9, and 9 breaks down even further to 3 times 3, and uh, I'll put them in order from lower numbers to higher numbers. So this is 3 times 3 times 5. That is 45 broken down to its prime factorization. Uh, and you can also, if you wish, write you know 3 squared times 5, right? 3 to the second power. There are two factors of 3 there. Same thing. All right, so I've broken down each denominator completely. Uh, the next part is actually writing out the LCD, or the least common denominator, least common multiple of the denominators. Now the LCD is made up this way. It is the product of the primes that show up. So like you notice I'm seeing a prime of 2, primes of 3, and 5. So I'll have a power of 2, a power of 3, and a power of 5 in the LCD. It's a product of primes uh, raised to the largest number of times they appear in, in, in any factorization. I know, uh, hopefully it all makes sense when I write it out. The largest number of times they appear in any factorization. All right, I'm going to say any. So look at the both factorizations here, there's only two of them. So for this example, the least common denominator, the least common multiple of these denominators, again I'm seeing, uh, you know, there's a prime of two, there's a prime of three, there's a prime uh, three shows up somewhere in these factorizations, and also a five shows up, All right? So I have a product of two, uh, three, and five, and then the powers on these, 
the power on 2, the exponent on 2, is again the largest number of times that prime appears in any factorization. So 2 appears, you know, once in this factorization and no times in this factor, so 0 times in this factorization. Uh, so the largest number of times it appears in any factorization is once. So that's 2 to the first power times, and then 3 to the, and again the power here, is the largest number of times 3 appears in any factorization. So 3 appears once in the factorization of 6, and it appears twice, two times, in the factorization of 45, and that's, that is the largest, right, the n number of times it appears in any factorization. So 3 to the second, right, to the 2. And then 5, Right, 5 appears 0 times in this factorization and once in this factorization. So that's the largest number of any of them. So 5 to the first. So the LCD is 2 times 3 squared times 5. Right? Um, and again, another, another way you could think of it too is just if you were to take these factorizations and try to make them look the same, you know, what would need to be added? Because I'm trying to find, you know, make these a common denominator, make them look exactly the same. So, like, up here, I would put a 3 and a 5, right? Because it needs another 3, and it needs a 5. And then down here, I would put a 2. A fa I'd multiply by, I'd put a factor of 2 because it's missing a 2. And then, then both of them look like 2 times 3 times 3 times 5. 2 times 3 times 3 times 5. And that's exactly what this is down here. 2 times 3 times 3, right, 3 squared times 5. Uh, so the LCD is 90, right, this is 9, 2 times 5 is 10, 9 times 10 is 90. Okay, so this procedure, the way I did it for just these numbers, is exactly the way we're going to do it with uh, where the denom when the denominators have variables in them. Um, you know, but it is a little trickier, perhaps some people find it trickier when there are letters involved, variables involved. Uh, what we're going to do here is I'm going to say we're going to treat factors with variables like a, like a prime. All right, so I'll make that little, little note here. I'm going to treat factors with variables in them. like a prime. Right, and again, this is of course after, uh, and I say like a prime, it doesn't mean they're prime, but you know, this, uh, this is of course after all your factoring techniques, and if you want to see other videos on factoring techniques, I put some of those up if you want to look for them, or read your book, on, you know, sections on factoring, other video, look for other, vid other better videos out there. Um, this is after you factored completely. Uh, so maybe I'll make that note too, you know, after you have factored completely. Alright, so a little cluttered this page, sorry about that. Alright, so here I take my denominators, right, just, just this guy here, this guy here, right. And we're going to factor them completely. 8 times x squared times y is, now if you want to, you can write it out without powers like I did here, where, you know, 8, when you break down 8 completely, that's 2 times 2 times 2, right? And then same thing for x squared, you know, that's x times x, you know, if you really think about it, that's that's what it squared means. And then times y, right? And there's, uh, there's the 8 x squared y or that first denominator broken up completely. And again, if you want, you don't have to do that. You can say 2 to the third times x squared times y. Or, and you don't need the dots here if you don't want. Put dots between numbers though, right? Because if I don't have the dots here, it looks like 222 and not 2 times 2 times 2. Um, but between variables, really not necessary. Uh, okay, so that's the first denominator. The other denominator, 12xy cubed. Again, this is a big a monomial here, one one product. I'm just I'm just gonna factor the 12 further. Now 12 is you know 
4 times 3, which is 2 times 2 times 3, right? 2 times 2 times 3, and then times x times, and then again, if you want to, you don't have to, y cubed is y times y times y, right? y to the third power, three factors of y there. Or, if you want to write it with powers, this is 2 squared times 3 times x times y cubed, okay? Alright, so then after all that, the LCD, right, the least common multiple of these denominators, or the least common denominator. Well, look at the factors that show up, right? And again, we're going to, now that I factor completely, we're going to treat variable uh, factors with variables in them, letters in them, as prime. So I'm seeing in both of these, right, so I'm looking at this here and this here. In both of them, I'm seeing, you know, uh, there's a... Um, a factor of 2 shows up, right? So the LCD is going to have 2 to some power. We'll talk about the power in a second. A factor of 3 shows up. So the least common denominator is going to have a, a, a factor of 3 to some power. And we'll, again, we'll talk about the powers in a second. Uh, a factor of X shows up, so we'll have a power of X. And a factor of Y shows up, so we'll have a power of Y. And then the powers, right? Remember, the exponent is this, you know, the largest number of times they appear in any factorization. Well, again, there's only two factorizations here. So the power on 2, the exponent on 2, well, you got 2 appears 3 times in this factorization and only twice in this one. So 3 is the largest number. And so this would be 2 to the 3rd. Again, very easy to see when you write it as powers. You know, there's 2 to the 3rd, 2 squared, 2 to the 3rd is the largest, right? Uh, power on 3. There is no 3 in the first factorization, and there's only 3 to the 1st in the second one, right? So 3 to the 1st is the power on 3 in the LCD. Uh, then the power on x. You see x squared, x to the 1st. Well, x squared is the highest one, right? It appears twice in this factorization and only once in this factorization. And then the power on y, I'm seeing y cubed here, y to the first there, y to the third is the highest. And it appears three times in this factorization and only once in that factorization. Alright, so here we go. This is the LCD. And I'll actually uh, multiply it out, okay? So we have 2 to the third times 3 times x squared times y cubed. 2 to the third is 8, right? This is 8 times 3, 8 times 3 is 24. And then you have x squared, y cubed. And here we go. This polynomial here is the least common denominator of the denominators of these two fractions. It's the least common multiple of these two expressions that I have in circles here. All right, wonderful. And I'll continue on. So here's uh, yet another example where my denominators are both monomials, right? A single term polynomial with a couple variables. So again, I'm only focused on the denominators in this video, right? Just, just finding the least common denominator of these two uh, fractions, 1 over 6a cubed b squared and 5 over 21a b cubed, just focusing on the denominators. And the whole reason we're doing this, right, the reason I want to find the LCD is so that later I can make them, make the denominators of my fractions the same, make them that LCD, and then we'll be able to add or subtract the fractions, right, and that, that's the whole key, right? when you add or subtract fractions, you need the same denominator, and it would be nice if it was the smallest possible, so that's the whole point of this. Alright, so if I'm asked to find the least common multiple of these two denominators here. Again, I'm going to break them down completely. So here comes the factoring part. All right, so first denominator, 6a, uh, sorry, a cubed b squared. 6 is 2 times 3. And then if, again, if you want to do this, totally fine. You know, a to the third is a times a times a b to the second is, you know, times b times b, or, you know, 2 times 3 times a cubed times b squared. Uh, you can leave, leave it with powers 
leave it with exponents. And the other denominator is 21 times a times b cubed. All right, 21 factors to 3 times 7, right, when you write it as product of primes, times a and then times, you know, b cubed is b times b times b. Or if you want to leave it with powers, right, 3 times 7 times a times b cubed. All right, so when we make up the LCD, right, the least the least common multiple of these denominators, the least common denominator, uh, all the bases I'm going to have with with certain exponents, the, you know, the are the primes that show up in these factorizations. So looking through these factor these two factorizations, I'm seeing a two showing up. So there's going to be two to some power times. I see a three showing up. There's a, so there's going to be three to some power. I see a 7 showing up, so there's going to be 7 to some power. I see an A, so there's going to be an A to some power. And I see a B, the factor of B showing up, so it's going to be B to some power. And these are the only factors I do see in any of these factorizations, 2, 3, 7, A, and B. And now for the exponents, right? remember again, it's the largest number of times they appear in any factorization. So the power on 2, well, there's 1, 2. 2 appears once in this factorization, and it appears 0 times in this factorization. So the largest of those, 1 and 0, is 1. Right? So 2 to the first, 2 to the 1 in the LCD. Uh, the power on 3, well, 3 appears once in this factorization and once in this factorization. Again, you have 3 to the first in both of them. So the largest of 1 and 1 is 1. Right, so you have 3 to the first, or just 3, in the LCD. The 7. Uh, 7 appears 0 times in this factorization and once in this factorization. So we have 7 to the first. The power on A. A appears 3 times in this factorization and only once in this one. Right? A cubed, A. Largest is A cubed. So 3 is the power on A in the LCD. And for the B, B appears twice in this factorization, right, B squared, and three times in this factorization, B cubed. The largest of two and three is three. And there we have it. The least common multiple of these two denominators, or the least common denominator, is two times three times seven times A cubed times B cubed. And when you multiply that out, I'll multiply the numbers. You know, 2 times 3 times 7, well, 2 times 3 is 6, 6 times 7 is 42. So your coefficient of the LCD is 42, and then you have times A cubed times B cubed. So 42 A cubed B cubed would be the LCD, the least common denominator of these two fractions. Wonderful. All right, so we're going to bump up the complexi complexity a little bit. Um, now I'm going to have a couple fractions here, and one, one of them has two terms, and is also a quadratic, you know, polynomial in z, the variable z. The, 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 the procedure does not change, though. All right, so I have two fractions, you know, 2 divided by 15z, right, so a one-term uh, polynomial, a monomial in the denominator there and 7 divided by, and then 5z squared plus 5z, a binomial, right, two-term polynomial in that denominator. Still doing the same stuff, right, still performing the same procedure. So one is I take my denominators and break them down completely, right, so one of them is 15z, right, maybe I'll circle them, right, we're only focused on the denominators in this video. So first I take 15z, and the only thing that can break down further here is the 15. Right? 15 is 3 times 5, when you write it as a product of primes, and then you have times, you know, z to the first, or just z. And there, that's, those are all the factors of 15z. Now the 5z squared plus 5z, right? This has multiple terms, you know, two term, a two-term polynomial, 5z squared and the positive 5z. 
Uh, so remember, again, factoring polynomials, look up videos on factoring polynomials, or read your book, sections on factoring polynomials. Uh, the first thing I'm looking for is the greatest common factor of both terms. Now, hopefully you can see it here that both have a factor of 5 and z, and z to the first at least, right? So I pull that out. So we pull out 5 times z. All right, so you have a factor of 5 and a factor, of, there's, the, there's the GCF, a factor of 5 and a factor of z, pull that, and then times, and then when I remove a factor of 5z from both these terms, the factor remaining would be z plus 1. Right, remember, when you remove an entire fa uh, term, there's still a factor of 1 left over. Okay, so now this time, a little different than the previous examples, because now I have a factor with two terms in it. So z plus 1, z5, those are the three factors of this denominator right here. Right. Um, and as mentioned in the first page of this video, uh, we're going to treat every, every factor that has a variable in it as a prime once we factor completely. So I'm done factoring completely, so we're going to treat, you know, f uh, 5 is prime. We're going to treat z as a prime, just z on its own, and also z plus 1. Right? We're going to treat this like a prime. All right? The whole thing, z plus 1, and then 3, 5, and z. All right. So I factored both polynomials completely. So now we make up, we can make up the LCD, right, the least common multiple of the denominators, or least common denominator. So again, looking at these factorizations, I see a, a factor of 3 show up, so th 3 to some power is going to be in the LCD. I'm seeing 5 show up, so 5 to some power is going to be in the LCD. I see a Z's show up, right, so Z to some power is going to be in the LCD, and I'm also seeing this factor of z plus 1, right, so the whole thing, the quantity, z plus 1, so z plus 1 to some power is going to be in the LCD. All right, and then the, now I'll put the powers in, right, the exponents, and remember, as I've said uh, back on the first page, you know, it's the, the largest number of times it appears in any factorization. So 3 appears, you know, once in this factorization, 0 times in this factorization, so it's got a power of 1 then in the LCD. 5 appears once in this factorization, once in this factorization, so still the largest is 1. Z appears once here, once here, so 1 again. And then the, this factor, this quantity, Z plus 1, shows up zero times in this factorization and once in this factorization again the largest of zero and one is one so every single one of these factors has a power of one in the LCD okay so the LCD is you know three times five which is 15 times Z times the quantity Z plus one and I'll, and you can leave it like this you know it's completely factored except for the 15, but it, you're going to see that when we go into adding and subtracting fractions in a later video, that it's going to be nice to kind of leave it in factored form for now. Uh, so you could leave it like this. This this is the LCD here, or, you know, if you want to actually multiply this out, you know, distribute the 15z, say 15z times z is 15z squared, plus, and then 15z times 1 is 15z. Uh, this wouldn't be wrong either, um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say I prefer this factored form, again, for, for purposes of adding and subtracting and then simplifying uh, fractions later. Okay, okay. So let's do it again. Uh, this time with some even more complex denominators, you know, both of these denominators in this example, I have 3 divided by x squared plus 4x minus 5, and 1 divided by x squared plus 10x plus 25. You know, this time, the denominators have three terms apiece. They're both, you know, trinomials, and they're quadratic in the variable x, quadratic in x, they might, you might hear people say. All right, so, but the same procedure. It is the same procedure. 
I am taking this denominator, right? we're only focusing on the denominators. And we're going to factor each denominator completely, right? Write them as a product of primes. x squared plus 4x minus 5. All right, that first denominator, that's a quadratic. And again, if you look, look for videos on factoring polynomials or factoring quadratics of the form ax squared plus bx plus c or whatever, uh, this would factor to x plus 5 times the quantity x minus 1. And you can double check by multiplying a foil, you know, x time, uh, distribute the x, x times x is x squared, then x times negative 1 is negative x, 5 times x is 5x, and then put those together, negative x and 5x, you make positive 4x, and then 5 times negative 1 is my negative 5 there. So this indeed is, this product is indeed this polynomial right there. So there's x squared plus 4x minus 5 factor completely, and then x squared plus 10x uh, plus 25. Again, look for, you know, uh, this is a pretty easily factorable one. Again, this, this would factor to x plus 5 times x plus 5. Or if you'd like to write, you know, because it has the same factor twice, you could write the quantity x plus 5, you know, to the second power. That's what that means to raise to the second power, right? Multiply by that, that factor twice. All right, so now I have factored both denominators completely. Uh, so the LCD should be easily formed. Right, so when I write out the LCD, uh, I again look at all the factorizations, right? This factorization, this factorization. I'm seeing x plus 5, the, the, fa the whole thing, right? Uh, the quantity x plus 5 in parentheses. I'm seeing that factor show up in my factorization. So I'm going to have x plus 5 to some power in my LCD times, and then the only other factor I'm seeing show up in these factorizations is this quantity x minus 1. So I've got x minus 1 in parentheses. So I'm going to have x minus 1, again, to some power. We'll fill in the powers here in a second in the LCD. All right, so now for the powers. Um, x plus 5, right? Remember, we just the, the, the power in the LCD is just, you know, the, the largest number of times this x plus 5 shows up in any of the factorizations. So here I've got x plus 5 once, right? There's only one x plus 5 in this factorization. In this factorization, however, I have x plus 5 twice, right? Or you can see over here x plus 5 squared. So the largest of the two is the squared, right? Two times in that second factorization. So I'm going to have x plus 5 squared in the LCD times, and then x minus 1 only shows up once, you know, it shows up one time in this factorization and then zero times in this factorization. The largest of the two is one. Um, so that, and there you go. The LCD is the, the quantity x plus 5 squared times the quantity x minus 1, you know, to the first, but you don't need to write to the first. And that's it. There's the LCD the least common multiple of these two denominators. Now, you could leave it like this, and again, I would prefer this, or you could actually multiply it out, you know, x plus 5 squared is x squared plus 10x plus 25, and then multiply that by x minus 1, and I, I, I don't really feel like doing that right now. Okay. I would rather leave it this way anyway, and I, and I promise you, leaving your LCD in factored form will make um, the addition and subtraction and then afterwards the simplification of fractions easier. All right, and then I have one last example here where, you know, a couple of binomial denominators this time, all right, a couple two-term uh, denominators. You have 3 over 21 minus 3x and 8 over x squared minus 49. Again, we're asked to find the least common denominator, the LCD, so again, I'm only focused on the denominators, right, the 21 minus 3x and the x squared minus 49. Now, I've mentioned in videos in the past that, you know, I don't like a polynomial written this way. Uh, this is not in what they call descending order, you know, the 
I want I would I like all my polynomials in descending order uh, according to a certain variable. Uh, this only has a variable of x, so I would like the highest power of x first. So I'm going to rewrite 21 minus 3x in descending order uh, with the powers of x. So the first power, uh, the first term I'm going to put is the negative 3x, and then the next term the the positive 21. Okay, before I factor it. All right, so now I'm going to factor. Okay. So I have negative 3x plus 21, multiple terms. Remember, when the first thing you should do when factoring a polynomial with multiple terms, look for the greatest common factor of those terms. Well, that would be 3, right? 3 goes into 3, 3 goes into 21. And another thing, if you've seen videos of mine before and seen other videos on, you know, factoring polynomials, a good thing to remember, too, is that, you know, yeah, the greatest common factor is 3, but also the lead coefficient is negative, right? The lead is negative here. So I'm not going to pull out 3. I'm going to pull out the, the opposite of the greatest common factor. I'm going to pull out negative 3. So I factor out negative 3. So there's a factor of negative 3. And then times, and when I remove a factor of negative 3, the factor remaining would be x you know, minus 7. And you can double check by multiplying, right? negative 3 times x is negative 3x and negative 3 times negative 7 positive 21 and there that's that's completely factored uh, and if you want to you could also write this as negative 1 times 3 I remember anytime you see a minus sign technically you could write in a factor of negative 1 right like minus 7 is the same thing as negative 1 times 7 so this could be x plus negative 1 times 7 if you want to uh, but I'm going to leave it like this. Okay, so there's that denominator factor completely. And the other one, you know, x squared minus 49, uh, this is one of those difference of two squares, right? And let me put this over here so it's like right underneath the other one. So there's the factorization for the first denominator. And then x squared minus 49 is x squared minus 7 squared, right? Remember, a difference of two squares factors to the product of binomial conjugates, right? You know, it's x plus 7 times x minus 7. And that would be as factored uh, as that denominator got. Um, so I have the, fac the factorizations of both denominators now. Okay, so now the LCD is, you know, going to run through and I'm seeing, you know, uh, seeing a factor of 3 and in fact a factor of negative 1 as well. So negative 3, negative 1 times 3 will be in the LCD uh, to some power, right? And there'll be 3 to some power, of course. We'll fill in the power later. Uh, and then I'm seeing times, you know, I'm seeing a fa another factor that's showing up in these factorization is the quantity x minus 7 times, and then another factor that's showing up in these factorizations is the quantity x plus 7. All right, and now for the exponents. Um, now, again, remember negative, technically this is negative 1 here. Uh, negative 1 is showing up one time up here and nothing, n none down here, so I'll, let's keep that as negative 1, negative 1 to the first. The 3, 3 is showing up once up here, none down there, so again just negative, you know, I'll just keep it to the first. I'm not going to write 1 anymore, all right? So negative 1 to the first, so negative 1 minus sign times, you know, 3 to the first, or just 3. Uh, then for x minus 7, the quantity x minus 7, it shows up once up here, once in this factorization, so just once again, just to the first. And then x will be in the LCD. And then x plus 7, the quantity x plus 7, shows up zero times in this factorization and once one time in this factorization. So again, to the first, the, high, the largest of the two. Um, there you have it. Right? And you can leave it like this. Right, or write it out without the dots. So the least common denominator, the least common multiple of these two denominators is negative 3 times x minus 7 times x plus 7. 
And again, I, I personally would leave it in this form uh, to make the addition, subtraction, and, and subsequent uh, simplification of fractions a little easier. Uh, you could also, again, multiply these two, get x squared minus 49, and then distribute the negative 3 and get, you know, some other polynomial, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it like this. Great, so the procedure is, you know, factor every, factor every denominator completely, and then the LCD is made up of the product of all the prime factors that show up in those factorizations, and the exponents on those primes in the LCD is the largest number of times they appear in any of the factorizations. Wonderful. All right, and we'll, you know, we'll add to this later. But for right now, just finding the LCD. Uh, and as always, at the end of these videos, I like to say, you know, please try to try your best to understand material on your own, learn things on your own. I find that things stick better when when you get it by yourself. Um, you know, read read through the text read through the material, the author's examples, try your best to understand them, practice problems in, in the backs of sections and look for ones that have you know answers in the back so you can check yourself. And don't just give up after the first attempt, please. You know, if after several attempts at a problem or a particular example you're working on, you're still not getting it, still not clicking, read through the section again. Right, try try reading through the material once more, maybe even a, maybe even a third time, because uh, you know maybe after doing a couple of examples, after working through stuff, maybe the second read through or third read through even something will click that didn't click the first time. You'll have your aha moment. Um, but if after that, if after several read throughs of the material, if after several attempts at the problems, uh, things still aren't clicking, still aren't meshing in your mind, uh, then it is not a sign of weakness whatsoever to go out asking for help. That is what people are there for. Ask your teachers, your tutors, friends of yours in the class who, who seem to be getting it, understand the material, look for videos on the subject, whether it be you know, YouTube, Khan Academy, or you know, videos such as this one, or um, plenty of other videos out there that are better, I assure you. Um, just, but just keep at it. Stay persistent. Keep working hard. Keep practicing, and I know that you'll eventually get it. I do. And and try to have, you know, try to make it as fun as you can. Try to have fun with it, and not, you know, not get bored to death. Um, and thank you for watching.